Welcome to the She's a 10 Times 5 show with hosts Lori Jabbar and Michelle Emick. We're bringing public figures, subject matter experts, and other accomplished guests to the Studio 50 table to serve you up the best tips, tricks, and key takeaways that all us midlifers want to know about. Okay, time to join us for some Times 5 fun. Let's go. This week's guest is Christine Buzan, posing tips expert and creator of Look Good in Photos. She's been seen on Good Morning America, Access Hollywood, and more. Christine gives five critical tips on how to feel comfortable and look your best in front of the camera. Let's go. Hey, everyone. Welcome to She's a 10 Times 5. (laughs) I'm Lori. I got my pal Michelle here. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Lori. Glad to be here. I, you know what? I'm so excited for this guest. So we've got Christine Buzan coming on, and you stumbled onto her on the in, you know whole Instagram world, and she's going to give us the tips and tricks to how we look better and more comfortable in front of the camera. Oh, my God. Yeah, she's a posing expert, and I loved it. I When I found her, I was like, I need help here, and I, because... Sometimes I'll take photos. I don't know where I'm looking. I was standing there. Don't know where to place my arm. You know, it's, we don't, I don't know what I'm doing. So why not go to the expert? And, and I, again, I know I'm not the only one out there. So I, I think that her information is going to be, we're going to walk away with some great takeaways. Yes, yes, yes. And you know what? You just have to get a group of um, us ladies or at a luncheon and taking photos. And that's an hour long process. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm deciding. So everyone's I, looking at the photo, like, let me yep. see what that one looks like. And then one's got their eyes closed and another one's like, I look fat. And you're, yeah, you know, I so know. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hoping she talks lighting and dimensions and spacing and angles and every little facet that we yeah. need to know. So I'm looking forward to this. All yeah, right, let's go. Good. Let's go. Welcome, Christine. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here today. This is going to be a lot of fun. It, it Yes. And what's really great about this is, um, and what I love is our audience is going to eat this up because if you're past your 40s, so to speak, like we're really not very good at all this stuff. Our kids can help us a little bit, but we were not brought up with devices and cameras and all of that. So I can't wait for you to lay it on us. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy just how much really in the past 30 years photography has changed. And I know that, you know, digital cameras were first introduced well before the early 2000s, but really we didn't adopt them, a lot of us, until the 2000s. I know the first time I saw a digital camera, I'm 33 now, so it was my friend's 10th birthday party. She was like rich, you know, so her dad bought a digital camera and it was the coolest thing ever because I think it only held like 15 photos, but it really opened up the world to being able to just take photos for fun in a way that so many people didn't have access to before because, you know, film was expensive and then you had to like purchase the film and have it developed and that was expensive too. And now it's crazy since we live in this kind of environment where so many of our first impressions are made through photos. And photos can just change in the same way that we, you know, can could write a letter in the past. We can send a photo now via text. So photos are more important than ever. They're more accessible than ever. Yet there's still a lot of confusion that lies around them. And I think that there's a lot of gatekeeping that comes with them. So what I always like to say that I do kind of within my own platforms, whether that's Instagram or TikTok or Facebook, is kind of like how the beauty YouTubers came on the scene in the early, like, 2010s it was like 2008 was really like the beauty youtube boom and before then all these makeup hacks were only reserved to professional makeup artists you know we'd have like different trends that we do but we'd find out a lot of things about beauty from you know reading magazines or kind of like these bigger institutions and then the beauty youtubers really shook it up and started talking about okay here's how you do beauty for your face and kind of sharing these secrets so that's really what i like to do with my platform is take all that knowledge that photographers and models have kind of accrued, you know, over the past hundred years and distill it down into ways that makes it really accessible for people to find what they need for their bodies. Since I think kind of before, you know, like, I guess I stepped on the scene and some other people stepped on the scene, 
this information was really catered toward more formal photos or towards models posing. So I really just love helping everyday people, especially women kind of step into their power and look and feel their best in this new digital society where so many of our first impressions are made through photos. I love yeah. that. And I was just thinking, boy, it could certainly save us a lot of time because if you go through anyone's phone right now, we can only imagine how many of the same photo they have, right? Like, oh, definitely. Never take one. If you ask someone to take a photo, people even automatically know, like, I took seven. Yes. <laughs> Why do we take so many? And then, of course, I, I was saying earlier before we got on camera, like, you know, everyone's favorite thing is like, let me see it. And then it's delete, you know, delete that. So yeah, pass it around, you know, yeah, before like, we, we all have to agree on, you know, the photo. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The one who has the camera holds the power really. Oh, so that's yes. I'm always the friend that holds the camera. <laughs> you know, it's always going to be on my phone because people will always pick the photo where their face looks the best. That's kind yes. of the one thing that I've Don't really found. Me the dirty before. trick. That's my, that's my trick too. I'm like, Oh, we'll take it on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And it's funny that you brought that up, you know, taking so many photos, because that's actually my first tip. I think in order to, you know, I kind of want to give, I guess, in the next 30 minutes or so, like five tips that I think will make you instantly look more photogenic and feel more comfortable in front of the camera. And I think that the biggest thing is mindset you know, giving yourself permission to take a bunch of photos and to experiment. It doesn't have to be perfect, but at least you tried. So don't be afraid of maybe, you know, trying out a new movement or something when you are taking a bunch of photos in a group or taking photos of yourself. Because the worst thing that will happen is that maybe you don't like the photo, you can either delete it or sit on it, just keep it in your camera roll and not post it. I think that's like the hardest thing, you know, especially with women and those of us who are, you know, millennial Gen X and older is that we come from a time where a photo could really make or break it. I remember so much anxiety and stress around school picture day growing up just because, you know, that was going to be your photo for the rest of the year. And it's really cool now because we do have the ability to take a bunch of photos within 30 seconds. You could take a hundred photos if you wanted, you know, so just really understand taking photos is completely normal. Taking a bunch of photos is completely normal. And the worst thing that will happen is you just don't post it, hide it, delete it, anything like that. But getting in a space where you're coming from curiosity and experimentation is so key to actually getting to a point where you like photos of yourself because it allows you to try out new things. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I get over when I take a lot of photos, I don't know about you, Michelle, I start to get a little bit overwhelmed. <laughs> I see all these photos and, you know, but I agree. I think, you know, when you have fun with it, I think it, it's just so much better. You know, you just feel more comfortable when you're, you're kind of goofing off with your photos. Right. Yeah. And I think that also when it comes to picking the best photo, when you have a bunch in your camera roll, uh, since I'm one of those people also, if we're going to take a group photo, I'm going to take at least seven to 10, you know, just to make sure everybody has their eyes open or, you know, their face looks good or that kind of thing. The thing that I always do and I always tell people to do is first just look at the outline of the photo in the gallery. If something looks weird about the overall outline of either how your body looks or how the group looks, that's not going to be the photo for you. That's kind of the original indicator. So I go through and I look at the outlines of how my photos look, like the overall pose, that kind of thing. And I'll heart those ones. And then from there, I'll look at the face because, you know, you could have the most beautiful pose on or if you could be America's next top model. But if your eyes are closed or you kind of get like a deer in headlights, like you're not going to want that photo, you know, because the face is kind of that's it's your face card. It's the number one thing that you pick. So if you do feel overwhelmed, definitely take a step back, look at the group, you know, in the like kind of viewfinder, make sure everybody looks good. And then those will be the ones that you'll start picking to narrow it down. All right. Okay, good to know. I'm writing that down. Yeah. <laughs> writing, write that down. <laughs> so my tip number two, and my five kind of fast, quick tips is Instead of relying on the camera's placement, rely on yourself to find your best angles in relation to the camera. So I think that one of the biggest mistakes people make, and this is really people of all ages, and I see this with, um, you know, the younger generation as well, too, is that we went from having a camera like this that you look through the viewfinder goes through your eye to being able to go like this. 
And so many of us have mastered selfies. We know for me, this is my selfie angle. It's like slightly to the right. It's about like eyebrow level with me. I know that's exactly how I like my face to look. But a lot of people don't know when the camera isn't in the selfie mode, you know, like how do I angle my face or why does my face look so much different when other people take my photo than it does in selfies. So one thing I always teach my students to do is something that I like to call the clock method. And basically what that is, is you get someone else to take your photo or you set your photo up like on a self timer or something like that. And, or you can even record yourself in video format and then screenshot your favorites. But you want the camera to be at about eyebrow level with you. So it would be set up here. You don't want it to be high. I know that a lot of people like the really? higher angle. Yeah, everyone says high to low. Like I, we like that was the, that's the moniker, right? High to low is, <laughs> that's so that's the not- the only thing our generation knows. So like hold the camera up high. And so now we're, <laughs> we're learning that's not the case. Okay. So that's not yeah. the case, okay. Well, when most people take your, especially if it's like your husband or something, they're going to be shoulder level. You know, that's how they're going to be taking the photo. You know, most people don't go like that. It's if I pull out a camera, this is kind of the angle. But you want to see really how your face looks straight on when you do this activity. So you're going to have the camera at about eyebrow height with you straight on, not bent toward you, not bent toward away you. So just like this basically and have someone else take your photo and you're going to move your head around in a clock so you're going to pose your face and you're going go noon one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so basically you know smiling or however you like to position your face making stops around the clock and you're going to either screenshot if you're doing a video or look at the photos and see which one is your face's best angle. So that way, next time you step in front of the camera, instead of wondering kind of where you are in relation to the camera's lens, you're able to know, okay, like I'm a four o'clock. So I know I like that. I also yeah. know like I like three. It's like, I, I don't mess around with seven o'clock, you know, like, or I can be like a straight on person. So just kind of knowing what your angles are that way, when the camera comes out and someone's taking a photo like this, you already know, okay, I'm going to move to four o'clock in relation to it. Instead of wondering why does my face look so different when it's just straight on from a lower camera angle, because the okay. thing is one thing um yeah. just for the for those that are listening and not watching what she just did was kind of rotated her her face around the clock so yeah yes. you move your head around in a clock like motion having someone photograph you making a stop at each number of the clock basically so um you know that way you you know how your face looks in relation to a camera and that's kind of why you want it to be straight on in front of you so that's something that i teach everyone especially anyone i do private coaching with or my students within like the post perfect course and things like that it's just really important to understand that you know you can't always you can't always control how the phone is held how the camera is held but what you can do is you can control the way that your body poses to the camera. So if that is a situation where someone is holding it from a much lower angle, you know, we're used to, if you're used to seeing yourself in selfies, higher angle tilted downward, that's going to make your forehead and eyes closer to the camera, your chin farther away. Um, and then you get kind of that definition a bit more with your chin if the camera's at a higher angle. The best way to kind of fix that if the camera is lower is by bringing your shoulders, you don't want to hunch forward, but just kind of hinging forward, bringing your shoulders toward the camera lens, that way your head is closer to the lens, and then pushing that forehead forward to elongate the lines of your chin. So yeah. instead of going like this, I'm sorry to everyone who's listening. Photos are a very visual medium. Yeah, yeah they, they are. are. The best to describe. It's the double chin. It's the kickback. It's yes. That. yes. Because this is, if I was just hanging out with you, talking to you normally, I mean, I'm already posing for the podcast, you know, like this is how it'd be. But since the camera lens is a little bit lower than me, bring my shoulders toward the camera lens. Then instead of pushing your chin toward the camera, which will get you that dip, Think of pushing your forehead directly toward the camera's like lens. a turtle, right? Yes, like a turtle. Yes. Like and you know, it looks a little bit funny when you do it from the side. 
That's a side view. <laughs> but it, it works and it's effective. And I mean, it's something that, you know, models have been doing since like the 1920s. Like that's when, you know, started recording it. I mean, it's the chin has always been an issue. You know, Queen Victoria of like Victoria and Albert was notorious for having somebody they'd always have someone take a coin and scratch like the lithograph to remove her double chin and the portraits and stuff like that so you know i mean it's were photo shopping even back then the back yeah. then yeah you know yeah. like this is this is something that people have been dealing with for a very long time yeah, so you know <laughs> yeah, it's not a new concern i know a lot of people like to think you know photos and vanities at an all-time high but I mean, it's just, it's become so accessible now, but, you know, people have been concerned about it. So, yeah, but it's really just about finding your best angles. And so much of that is experimentation, like we talked about in point one, and just trying different things out to see what you look best in, because how you look best may not be the same as me. And that's really something I try to teach in my teachings is that different poses look different on different bodies. So um, there is, you know, a degree of experimentation, but really figuring out your best angles instead of relying on the phone. And um, something else I always suggest to people is that I always make, especially in my post perfect class, the first one of the first things we do is take photos of yourself, you know, from that kind of neutral chest height angle, mm -hmm. turning in a circle to figure out basically how you look from every angle. Because a lot of people think, you know, when they take photos, especially group photos, they want to turn at a 90 degree angle. But that, you know, especially if you are a woman who has, you know, chests and ch uh, like a larger chest and the arms that tend to go with it, like I am, this isn't necessarily the best angle. For me, a 45 degree looks much better it just opens up my body much more but for some people you know who have a very athletic build they could look amazing at a 90 degree angle and that could show off their best features so there is no one size fits all just really get comfortable with the way that your body looks in front of the camera got it okay yeah and then the other big tip that i think is really important and i especially find this from women who are in you know, their mid 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and I have followers in their 80s as well, which is amazing, um, is you need to work with your light, especially as your skin changes. And, you know, our bodies are meant to change throughout the course of our lives. And with that, we have to relearn different strategies and different tips and how they work for us. It's not like one of those things where you learn how to pose once and you're done. It's always just as you kind of maybe style your body differently throughout life. You're going to learn, you know, different tips and tricks that help you present yourself in a way you want to be seen. And lighting is just such a tremendous tool for photos. So right now I have a little external light up, but if I take this light away, if you look, sorry to everyone listening, but if you look at, you know, kind of my, I have a slight, you know, marionette lines, I have deep set under eyes, just adding that light really oh, yeah. smooths things mm -hmm. out. So you yeah. want to work with lighting to your advantage. The best times to take photos are really sunrise or sunset, you know, those beautiful golden hours, because you get a light similar to the light I have with my external light, where instead of shining above you, it's kind of shining directly on you. The worst is obviously direct sunlight, daylight. I personally do not take pictures. <laughs> Sound like I'm Mariah Carey or something. But um, <laughs> when it's direct sunlight, I try to avoid taking pictures during that time. I know for especially fun family events, like when you're in the sun and stuff like that, you're going to the beach, you're going to need that throw on sunglasses. Like that's yeah. honestly the best tip, you know, is just because yeah, the, you, under you eyes, stay in a good mood because if you see yourself, you're like, Whoa, what's going on here? And that's not how you look, you know, like right. that's not even how you look when people are looking at you in the sun like that. It's just, you know, with photography, you're taking a 3d subject and our faces are very 3d. I mean, they're, you know, they're orbs <laughs> and you're compressing it as a 2d image. So you're going to get some weird flattening and things like that from that light. Another thing I always recommend too, if it is a very sunny day, step into the shade, but really be wary of if there's like a tree, you know, like <laughs> casting a shadow on you, because that will give a very kind of not the best effect too. But, um, you know, as your skin changes, experiment with that lighting and more and more people, especially like every single young person I know has, I'm just going to shine this light has an external light that they either clip onto their phone or they keep in their bag. It is completely normal now. And it's just, it works so much better than your phone's flash, 
even if it is like a day daytime photo, bring out that light, you know, and look your best. So I, it, lighting can cure just a world of issues, basically. So I highly recommend utilizing lighting to your advantage. Yeah, it. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, yeah. I mean, Michelle and I both have light on right now, and it's just it does make such a significant difference. And you know, the other thing, it's interesting that you said about sunglasses because. As I've aged, my <laughs> eyes have become so sensitive to light. Like sometimes I find myself wearing my sunglasses in the darn grocery store because of the lighting. And I so hate when grocery I, store lighting. It's it's very it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that that's a good point because I think, you know, I have found when I take off my sunglasses and it's bright out, I don't. I don't look normal. I look like like it's forced because mm -hmm. of the sensitivity. Yeah. And I mean, I have it. I can't tell what eye color. I do blue eyes as well. Blue eyes. Yeah. I also have blue eyes. So I have really sensitive lights. If you notice in my Instagram and TikTok videos, I blink a lot. And that's just because my eyes are kind of like a light gray. So it really it affects them. But, you know, it's it's always really a challenge taking photos. If you are in the sun, one of the things that I definitely do recommend is having your photographer count down count to three, count up to three, I guess. And if you need to, I don't recommend closing your eyes because that can be a lot, but looking down on one and two, and then kind of looking up at the camera at three. And if you feel like your eyes get closed, I recommend doing looking down at one, looking above the camera at two, and then looking at the camera at three. So okay. that is kind of a workaround that does help, especially if you, you have kids or grandkids or because kids always have their eyes closed. And the, no you know, their grandkids eyes are developing. yet. OK, no grandkids yet. No grandkids. Well, some people do. It's crazy, you know. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. It's so true, too, because you're trying to take a cute photo and you're like, oh, come on. Get your eyes closed. Yeah. So that's yeah. A good little those trick guys to ruin use. photos. You know, it's it's all about the face is just so important. Yeah. So, and it, I mean, it comes down to just kind of, you know, science <laughs> and it's our primal instinct when, you know, we meet someone, we look at their eyes and it's just, it's a survival tactic basically to kind of size up, you know, who we're meeting. Um, but it's so important with photos too. We just, we're trained to look at people's eyes first. And that's really how we form connections and kind of express ourselves authentically is with our eyes and what we want to convey. So when in doubt, you know, don't be afraid of sunglasses. Sunglasses are great. Avoid direct sunlight, opt for the shade or go for, you know, golden hour or, you know, the sunrise golden hour. Yes. Um, another thing, too, that I think will really that really helps people look their best. And this is kind of like a rule. I can't remember exactly who said it, but but it's if it bends, bend it. So keeping your body loose, keeping your body staggered a bit. Whenever you have two of any body part and you're looking at a photo, again, taking a 3D subject, making it 2D, the viewer's eye will get trapped in the space in between those body parts. So if I have my shoulders straight on and then I'm sitting right now, but if my arms, my elbows are across from one another, my feet are firmly planted next to each other on the ground, I'm going to look very box-like. And instead of giving the viewer kind of a nice, beautiful shape to look at, they're just going to be fixated upon kind of the square figure that happens because I have two of everything. So I always recommend just kind of breaking that line. So thinking from the bottom up, you know, placing your weight on one leg, normally your back leg, if you want your leg to look longer, creating slight bends with your arms, maybe angling your hips a little bit. And then I think shoulders are definitely one of the most underrated points when it comes to posing is, you know, just creating that movement a little bit in your shoulders. And if you are taking photos, like let's say a group photo and you want to change things up and not hold the same pose for like 17 shots in a row, I recommend in between your shots, you know, getting your base figured out. So you're holding on to your friend and then slight head tilts and slight mm -hmm. shoulder tilts in between just to mm -hmm. kind of keep things fresh and shake it up. That's something I do. I just kind of move a little bit. And that will also keep you from looking too stiff. You really just kind of want to ev evoke a sense of movement when you're posing for photos. So if it bends, bend it. You don't have to bend it all the way like this. You know, just a slight bend is sufficient, depending on how much, you know, drama you want to add. And then stagger your body. Don't think of having two of the same thing directly across from each other. So just kind of keep it loose. Keep it moving. So bend it. Christina, I notice a lot of my peers and friends, they do the, the cross legs. Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? 
So is that is there a benefit to crossing your legs or yeah? So the cross legs, it's a very interesting posing tool because the thing is, you know, I mean, different things have come to signal different things, if that makes sense. So you see a lot, you know, like the Princess of Wales, Catherine, um, Catherine, the Princess of Wales will do the cross legs. You'll see kind of, a, it's a very like ladylike pose, but it's okay. interesting because in crossing one leg in front of the other, you both lengthen the front leg and create a narrowing point at the knees, which makes the figure overall look slightly curvier and more, you know, kind of delicate and feminine. Um, so if you are someone who is bottom heavy, I would suggest not crossing at the ankles because that is going to make the bottom half of your body look more dramatic, unless that is something you want to accent, then by all means, please, you know, go ahead. I love it. I love that for you. But, um, it is a very interesting posing tool in that it both adds curve lengthens and it has like a signifier for being very ladylike. Whereas if you do like a direct kind of hip pop, that adds extra curve, but that's a little bit more sassy and, you know, razzle dazzle. So I think that's actually kind of one of my favorite poses. And with crossing at either your knees or your ankles, the cross in front of the other, you can really experiment with the space in between, like how forward your front leg is. You can experiment. I would not recommend doing two flat feet just because that can look, it can just kind of get a little bit flat. I always kind of will keep you know, keep your heel up a little bit on that front leg just to add a sense of movement. Or you can even experiment with pointing your foot if you really want the focus to be an elongated leg. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then general rule is always place your weight on one leg. I like to keep my weight on my back leg because I'm tall, I'm 5'9", but I do like to have a very elongated line to my poses. Yes, I think we all do, right? Yeah, so weight on the back leg, you can experiment with how you know high or low your ankle is off the ground with the front one, whether you're doing a full point or you're just kind of relaxing like this. But um, yeah, so that's kind of, do you guys and have what, more leg questions? Well, I was gonna ask about the arm because I know yeah. we used to always say younger, it was like, you don't wanna put your, press your arm against mm -hmm. your body because then that makes your arm look big. So you kind of put your, arm out but what are you supposed to do with the other hand or is that even a pose that you're supposed to do well that, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of people i think do that hand on hip kind mm -hmm. of maneuver which you don't recommend is that correct yeah so the thing that a lot of people do hand on hip and it's because they're turning too far to the side oh so you go like this you're looking just at my arm whereas yeah. if i have the same pose but i open my shoulders up slightly they're to begin with, there isn't as much arm smush. Right. So people, I think a lot of people just need to stop doing the 90 degrees. You can even, you can have your hips facing 90 degrees, then turn at your shoulders to open it up. But I think that kind of solves that problem. I do recommend whatever is closest to the body is going to look larger. Taking up space is, you know, so key within photos. I think a lot of people feel self-conscious so they we want to make ourselves smaller but in photos the smaller you make yourself look the bigger you're going to look because the viewer's eye doesn't have space to break up in between so i think something that's a bit more relaxed than the hand on the hip is if you're wearing you know pants looping a finger through your pocket or your belt loop or even taking your hand and instead of grabbing on like this right. flipping it so your thumb is in front and it just kind of shapes the body because that it doesn't make the arm the focus, which you're doing that because you're trying to minimize the size of your arm. But I think a lot right. of people end up making the arm the focus when they do that. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. right. Writing that down. Yeah, and I feel bad for all the <laughs> listeners. <No. laughs> Just it's, you're it's gonna have challenge. to watch it. You're gonna have, yeah. to, watch you're gonna have it. to watch <laughs> You're gonna have to get the, the pointers. Yeah. <laughs> That's all great. right. He's writing that down. I love that. So write it down. And that, that really goes to um, tip number five, which is taking up space and interacting with your surroundings. You know, you want to you want the lines of your body to be seen, even if there are specific things that you want to minimize. And that is your goal for posing. You still need to be able to see lines of differentiation or intentionally pose inside your body to, you know, cover it up, if that makes sense. And I think that one of the best ways to create 
lines and curves in your pose that make it, things more visually interesting while still looking natural is interacting with your surroundings. For instance, I have this random like kind of table right here. If I was posing, I'd, I could rest, you know, my arm there and that gives me something to do. That way it's not just me standing in the middle of something. Or if there's a staircase, rest your hand on the staircase. Interact with whatever you have on your your person. So like, for instance, I have glasses. I could, you know, adjust my glasses as I wear them. If I had a button up shirt with a collar, I could adjust my collar, pants, pockets, a purse, anything like that. Or if there's somewhere to rest your hand, if there's stairs, you know, maybe stand on the stairs instead of standing in front of the stairs. So just really focus on creating movement and these like organic moments that will make your pose look much more natural and make you look at ease. I think that's kind of the biggest tip to tie everything together and take it to the next level. Yeah. I like to pose with my shot glass. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah, really good. Okay. I have one final question and those are such good five points. When you're posing with your family or your spouse or partner, mm -hmm. is there any tips? Like, you know, we, we had said before we started recording, I have, uh, you know, rather tall boys. And I always feel like it's kind of awkward. What, what are your tips there for posing with your spouse or your kids? Yeah. So I think when people take photos with other people, they'll either stand side by side and directly face the camera straight on, or you have everybody turning to the side and hunching in on one another. And then you all kind of become one blob, which makes everybody look larger, even if they're like a four-year-old who weighs 30 pounds. I don't know how much four-year-olds weigh, but a four-year-old who weighs 30 pounds, yeah. you know? Like, um, So when you pose with other people, there are three main points of connection you can make. And that is angling your hips towards someone which like a full hip angle is normally reserved towards the people that you are the closest with. So people that are your children or people that are your spouse, you're not going to do that with your coworker, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it's just going to be angled full blown, like hips toward them. Another is angling your shoulders toward them. So you connect at the shoulder with someone, um, tilt your shoulder in toward them or tilting your head toward them. So really thinking about those three points of connection, that's how you show how close you are to someone. And the closer you are to someone, the more all three of those points are connecting with that person. So when it comes to posing, if you're posing with people with significant height differences, like let's say you have sons that are taller than you, or you have young children who are way shorter than you, it's all about getting the heads kind of staggered but on almost the same level so a lot of photographers will create especially with um like family portraits they'll create almost like a triangle shape between people's heads but i know that that's not really feasible all the time so it's just about getting people kind of on the same level so if someone is way taller and you're way shorter if you look at my phone for instance my phone is way smaller than my head but so if we were standing side to side the phone would look very tiny. However, if I put the phone closer to the camera's lens at like a diagonal, so it's like in front, if this is a person, they'd be standing in front of me, it will look larger. Mm -hmm. So it's really about instead of thinking of standing side by side next to people, creating dimensions. So you could have, you know, your son, again, it could be a connection at the shoulder almost where they're behind you, but your shoulders overlap in the photo, but you're standing a bit more forward. And even if it's like a few steps forward to kind of create the optical illusion of togetherness while being closer to the camera lens, which will make you look larger. So it's really about experimenting with that. I suggest for everyone getting a tripod you know, we're at the point where everybody has tripods. Taking photos is not weird anymore. So tripod and Bluetooth remote or using your phone self timer, setting it up on, you know, forward facing camera mode and just noticing how when you move people around, you get these different visual effects. Um, and so, you know, just trying that out and then how you show your connection is by making sure that a story is being told between the shoulders and the tilt of the head. So if your son's over here, He's behind, he's behind now, tilting heads toward one another, you know, just to show that connection, even though you're not physically touching each other, like standing in a line. Does that make sense? Yes. That's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah great. I wish I would have known that this past weekend when I was. Yeah, Mother's Day. <laughs> Mother's I'm, Day. Yeah. <laughs> graduation. I'm families to collaborate with, you know, because the thing is, 
I, you know, I have, I'm not married. I don't have any kids. So I have my mom, my dad, my sister and two cats. My sister lives in Seattle, so she's farther away. But, you know, I'm tr always trying to find people, content creators, if anyone's watching this, you're a family creator, definitely slide into my DMs. And especially if you're in Southern California and we can <laughs> do some examples. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited to go on your Instagram and, and look at all the tutorials because I know you got really good content. Oh, so. she does. It's so good. Thank yes. you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And... Adiós.